Ed, thank you. Thank you. It's always great to get to hear Ed sign in the morning. It's one of the perks of working here in the video department. Before the doors even open up, I get to hear Ed do some serious jamming out well, many days a week. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it's a pleasure. You know, I've got a dream job coming in cold. Yeah. You know, I can tell you, I always get better <laughs> later on in the day. So. You hear me at my worst. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, okay, so there was Ed at his worst, so, you know, take that for what it is. But it just gets better from Thank there. you. Thank you. Well, man, I want to, for one thing, you got to tell us a little bit about this guitar. We want to talk about guitar collections, but that is a beauty. Thank you. I mean, this one caught my eye. This is my personal, my first Paul Reed Smith. Uh, More Music became a dealer the first time back in 2002. Uh, 2003, and um, this guitar is celebrating its 20th birthday. This is a 2003 Custom 24 in Blue Mateo, and um, I just you know fell in love with it at the moment I saw it. You know, blue is my favorite color. This is the right shade. I just love the little peak of the natural binding, the, the natural wood in contrast yeah. with this electric blue looking thing. And um, this has been a, a this is one of my favorite guitars. You know, I have a modest collection. Um, you work around guitars all day. You really have to develop this real kind of. At least I had to develop this Buddhist sense of like recognizing uh, materialism and being thankful for what you have. And you know, I have what I need. I have a lot of wants, but you know, oh yeah, <laughs> you yeah. have to rein that in when you're working in the guitar shop like this. So um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it really. I mean, you've played it so often. I've seen you perform with it live. It seems to be your workhorse. Uh, but like you say, you know, you've got other guitars as well. Yeah. And one of the things I want to see if we can help people understand, especially those who might just be getting started on the journey. Um, now, there are some fortunate people who can approach guitar collection as a person would approach stamp collecting, coin collecting, yeah, yeah. or you just want a variety and you want, you know, beauty, you want something to, to look at, you know, whenever you just want that aesthetic sense. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of us, it's more like, you know, a woodworker choosing the tools that they yeah. need. Um, so how did, why would a person need a second guitar, first of all? When you've got one, and you know your guitar sounds good it's got some versatility to it what would lead you to want a second guitar well um for me and i don't think i'm alone in this i i i listen to a lot of diverse styles of music you know i i i, I love music that's what brought me into playing guitar it was really a, a deep love for music i didn't come from a family of musicians you know this i i conjured this i made this happen you know for myself and um Different styles of music require different tools because all, each of these tools feel differently, you know. So, you know, I have a couple Stratocasters that I love, you know. I've got a Les Paul that I love, you know. You know, the older I get, the older my guitars get. So they're all approaching <laughs> 20 years old, I guess. But um, the feel, you know, because so much of guitar playing, for those who get into it, you recognize that it's a tactile experience. It's a feel thing, literally. And the, the qualities in attributes of each different type of guitar um, make me play differently you know so you know with my Stratocaster you're working on that guitar you have to play it you don't have as much sustain as you do with a, 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 a build like a PRS you know custom 24 or, or Les Paul and that's just the difference in the way the guitars are constructed of course the pickups and all the things that make a guitar to guitar take you know come into play but that's the reason why I have a collection of different guitars because my playing styles kind of reflect the diversity of the music that I like to listen to. And I always try to emulate the different, you know, different types of music I love, so. Yeah, 
And maybe there's probably still a handful of people out there, beginners in particular, that um, don't realize the difference that a set of pickups or a bolt-on neck compared to a set neck. The, the difference in sound that those give you and, uh, you know, for a lot of us who are, you know, going out and starting our performing career doing other people's music, yeah. you want to sound like the performer that, that did it. You want to be as accurate as possible for most of us. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about that. So, you know, yeah, part of my job is convincing, you know, uh, well, I don't say convincing, but, you know, there's always someone in the family that has the first strings, right? It's usually so, it's like, all right, yeah, they're, they're you know, I can help you not make a lateral move. You, know, mm -hmm. you don't need, you might like, you know, this, two of the same thing or four of the same thing, and that's fine. But in, the, uh, in my quest to become a better guitar player, I found that it was necessary to, um, to explore and, and play different styles of music, and I found that that complemented, you know, my playing. You know, when I first started out, I was into, it was the British wave of new heavy metal, so Maiden, Priest, and of course, Eddie Van Halen, you know. Um, but then when I started digging into my influences' influences, and then I found like, okay, there's so many different, you know, s types of, of music. And, you know, I discovered the blues, of course, like everybody usually does in their journey of guitar playing. And um, that, uh, that's when I recognized that, I, oh, uh, to learn to speak that language, you know, the language of, say, Texas blues, you know, with Stevie Ray and, 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 of course, Jimi Hendrix, I needed a Stratocaster, you yeah. know. So that's, that's how I bought my first Strat. Um, and uh, when my Les Paul found me, uh, uh, it, it, you know, I recognized the differences between those two, you know, very different types of guitars. Um, and then when, when I really got my hands on and had to learn about Paul Reed Smith, you know, as a product specialist to learn the guitars, um, that's when I discovered the Custom 24. And, and, and this guitar is, I always say it's my desert island guitar. If I only had one and I needed to get at least the, neck position single coil sound which you know this you know with the right gain structure and channel in your amplifier you can get a very very good passable uh uh you know strat tone oh cool uh, can, we, can we hear it yeah i have to dial the gain back a little bit but at least you know okay let me see if i can help yeah. you out. You know what I, I mean? see what you mean, yeah. So, so um, that, I get so much mileage out of that, you know. And then, you know, as I did, you know, when we started, you know, filming, of course, the great, you know, humbucking, you know. So, I mean, for me, that's just like, at least I've got two universes of, of guitar, you know, tone that, that I can really, you know, emulate with this one guitar. And, to, and another thing, I guess, you know, feel and playability uh, of, all, of all my guitars, I... I for some reason, I feel like I play, I sound the best on this one. You know, I, I, I don't have an explanation for it. Um, you know, I, I, I've done, you know, many, 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 you know, rock shows with my Les Paul. I've done a lot of stuff. You know, I, I put together a, a, a funk neo soul band. I used my Strat on that, of course. As a matter of fact, I started that band just so I can have an excuse to play my, a Stratocaster oh. as a performing uh, musician. And... Um, so I have a lot of experience, uh, performance experience with, I think those, what are three iconic guitar designs, you know, the Custom 24, Gibson Les Paul, and a Fender Stratocaster. And um, this is the one that I'm able to, you know, like I said, you know, dial in the right amount, you know, you know the passable tones of, of, of what are two really iconic, you know, right. guitars out there. Now, when you say that you feel that you play better on that, I... I don't get a sense that that's totally just from the tone. It, it has to do something with what you say—that tactile experience, the interface between you and the guitar, right? Yeah, yeah, and um, and and, and I, I I I guess I 
never really thought about it, but it was that was brought to my attention. You know, I was in an uh, unusually popular bar band where I was playing a Gibson Les Paul all the time. You know, uh, because you know, drop D tuning, you know, you know, stuff in between songs like right away doing it on the fly. It was you know, it's a great guitar for that. Um, but uh, I guess you know, one night I, t I just decided to start taking out the custom twenty four with this band, which I had not done. Mm -hmm. And the night that I did it, it was like the rest of the band was like, you know, wow, you know, you really favor that guitar. And I and yeah, because I have so much fun with it. You know, I, I just it's I guess maybe that's a big part of it. You know, the fun factor. I th I think that's what everybody is looking for when they start playing guitar. You know, yeah. and. How do you go about guiding a person to help them find that guitar that feels like that to them? Um, well, you know, there's always those those qualifying questions and what kind of music you're into, what what's letting you know, what brought you into the this guitar store? You know, what brought you to more music? Um, why are you calling moreguitars.com? Um, and I love having that conversation because it's it you know it's it's a conversation I had with myself. You know, I had experience I had to you know figure out for myself. Um, it's all about lighting that spark, uh, fanning that spark of inspiration, you know. And, you know, if I, when, I was, when I was 12, when I first started really messing around with it, it, it I didn't take off on it until I, my, I finally got an electric guitar. You know, if I it was like, no, you have to start playing with acoustic, I don't know if I would have yeah. stuck yeah. with it. I wanted to rock, you know. Yeah. And I, I, you know, came to the acoustic guitar after I was proficient on the electric, and then that learn, I learned how to play acoustic, and that was like a completely different playing experience, you know. Uh, and then I recognized that, wow, now that I'm sounding better on the acoustic, it's it forced me to recognize what I was doing on the electric guitar, which of course there's, you know, so much stuff that, that you do on electric in terms of muting techniques, mm -hmm. you know, right. in the case of less is more in certain ways. Like, I, I always point this out to people, it's like, I wouldn't play a G chord like that on the electric mm -hmm. guitar. Um, the G7, I eliminate that. I just get the kind of the fundamental. All right. So, I mean, little things like that, but in terms of, you know, answering your question, sorry, it, it's, it's helping to people recognize what, what makes them want to do it, you know, mm -hmm. and then helping them find the right tool for, to, to, to make them, you know, dig in. Right. For a lot of people, is it just that to have the ability to put some guitars in your hands and just, you know, to feel them? And I guess, it, you know, when you're a beginner and you don't know even how it's supposed to feel, um, I guess, you know, kind of honing somebody into that, you've got to have some kind of experience to do that. I wouldn't know how to do it myself. You know, um yeah, I, I guess it's kind of like, like, you know, appealing to someone's, you know, inner 14-year-old, inner teen, you know, that's, it has to be something visceral and not uh, complicated, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, it's all about breaking down walls and opening up, you know, and, 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 and helping people recognize it's okay to, you know, uh, to, I don't want to say want to be cool, but, but as far as like, you know, there is a, there's something cool about playing guitar. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, I was thinking of that line in, in, in uh, A League of Their Own, you know, the heart is what makes it cool. You know, if it was easy, everybody would do it. So, you know, recognizing somebody's, you know, inspiration and, 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 and encouraging that. And also, also the thing I always tell people, look, you have to be patient with yourself. You have to be patient with yourself. This is, you know, this might be the first mountain that you had difficulty climbing. You know, you may be really successful in other things. You may have other hobbies that you're, you know, aces at. But the guitar could be the first thing. You know, you have to develop strength and dexterity in your non-dominant hand. When you're playing the instrument properly, you're not really looking at what your fingers are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where the whole, you know, it's counterintuitive. When I explain to people, look, it's more of a tactile experience. And, and, and you know, sound, of course, obviously, it's a musical instrument that plays into it. but. To really become proficient, you have to kind of let go of the visual learning cues and start start recognizing, you know, again that tactile uh, uh, sensory uh, experience, so that you recognize, like, oh, I play a C, a G, a D. I, I know what it feels like, mm -hmm. you know. Right. So, and 
I'm assuming that's probably the reason for some of your qualifying questions, because especially if it's a if it's a first time player, you want to get something in their hands that's going to give them a reward when they hear it. They that they feel, hey, I've heard this before. I sound a little bit like Stevie Ray, or I sound uh, you know a little bit like John Mayer. Or yeah, something. yeah. Is that kind of it? And then I guess as they get experience with playing then it's a little bit easier to guide them to where they want to go to the second step? Yeah, Is it? yeah, that's, exa that's exactly it. Because, um, you know, I call myself a rock and roll guitar player. You know, and and that, in my mind, that covers a lot, you know, mm -hmm. because it really came up. For me, it was metal, you know, that's... But, you know, again, when going through that musical journey, uh, you know, my mind is, and ears are opened up to so many different styles of music, you know, to answer certain musical questions I had to find the answer in a different genre, you know, of music. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's, it's, it, it is a, a matter of, of, you know, just getting to know somebody, you know. I mean, I'm in sales, I know, but my sales philosophy is like, you know, uh, it's, it's all about personal relationships, you know. And if you can't love everybody, you can't sell anybody. You know, so I immediately have something in common with a perfect stranger if we have a love of music already, you know. Right. And, you know, and, everyone, and I really feel like, you know, the world is full of people, of friends you haven't met yet, as long as you find that common thing that you share, whatever it is. You know. That's so cool. And I'm, I've seen you interact with people, you know, in the store that come in. And, you know, it just, it's kind of, I just enjoy watching it because I can see you not only connecting with the person, but helping connect them with an instrument. I mean, you're, you're playing matchmaker to a degree almost. Yeah. And even when I've heard you, you know, talking to online customers, it's the same kind of thing. You ask the same kind of qualifying questions. And, you know, thankfully with our, you know, return policies, they can get a guitar in their hands and try it out, even if they're not able to come into the store. Yeah, you know, it's a leap of faith to buy a guitar <laughs> online, you know, without seeing it. Come on, I mean, <laughs> yeah. but that's a, that's really, you know, some people don't have any options for that, and and, and I certainly recognize that. Um, and yeah, I, I really make a point to try and see people. I I, I want to see you, you know, and that's just my my philosophy to go through life, you know, to see people, and to recognize and, and their authenticity. And, and I think one thing coming from a, a rock and roll background, you know, if, 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 it's, if it's BS, if it's fake, you, people pick up on that right away. Yeah. You know, it has to be authentic. You cannot fake that. That's what drives me as a, as a performing, you know, guitar player and just, you know, going through life and especially talking to a complete stranger that I haven't met either on the telephone or when they walk through the doors of the shop. And... Um, you know, that's why I'm so happy to do what I do because I feel like I do have an opportunity to really be helpful, you know. And, and you know, the older you get, for me, I'm, the I'm leaning into that sense of, you know, humble mentorship to, you know, help someone because playing guitar has been, you know, such a, 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 a gift, you know, that I gave to myself, I suppose, you know. When I was a teenager, you know, it's like when I felt the blues, I learned how to play the blues, you know. And, you know, when you, know, when you feel good, you, you know, being able to express yourself on the guitar, um, you know, as a performer, too, then people see that. They see it. it's authentic. It's real. And that's where you have that connection with your audience, uh, which has to be pure. It's, it's a visceral, for me, experience. And, and, and that's where, you know, I would hope that everybody that plays guitar, you know, maybe you'll never have that, but... It, but Certainly, you're missing out on a really, really good thing if you didn't get the opportunity to even just play something for your friends and make them go, oh, wow. Yeah. You know? This is so refreshing, not only to get a chance to talk to you about this, you know, here so people can hear this. I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate that, you know, I've, you know, been able to be around with staff meetings, even though, you know, I'm the videographer here. I hear you guys whenever you're not talking to customers. And this is what I hear all the time. And it's so different than I expect, not only in music retail, because I've had a lot of bad experiences in some larger markets, 
but uh, just in retail in general, you really, I mean, you are authentic with what you just said here. I'm not going to regurgitate mm -hmm. it, but I hear this all the time, and it doesn't seem like that we ever have anybody on the staff at More Guitars that doesn't feel that way. Yeah, I feel, uh, thank you for saying that, because that's something that I'm really uh, thankful for and, and proud of. Uh, you know, we, we all do have a, you know, a sense of empathy, you know, uh, being creatives, you know, sensitive to the feelings of others, you know, I think that's just important. You know, certainly there's, there's plenty of creative artists that don't have that same kind of, you know, philosophy, uh, you know, uh, they reveal themselves for who they are, you know. But for me, playing music and being in a band, it's that sense of fellowship that's what drives me. The collaboration, you know, I want to be part of, 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 of a team of people, you know, because you know, I don't have every answers to everything, you know. Um, I don't have all of the skills. But when I'm in a group that complements my weaknesses and I can then complement or, you know, make up for the deficits of others, you know, because nobody's perfect. And so, you know, the sales team here at More Music, you know, because all of us have experience being in bands, you know, you have to learn how to play well with others, <laughs> you yeah. know, mm -hmm. uh, in, in different ways. And, and yeah, it is refreshing every day to come in and talk and, and be with somebody who recognizes that, you know, yeah, part of interacting with the public, you know, whether it's your customers, or your audience, it's seeing them and, and, and being open and having that ability to, to, to vibe with them, you know. There's a certain vulnerability that you, you experience as a as a performer, you're putting it out there, you know, and and we joke that a, a, a large part of our workday is rejection. <laughs> you know, I get heard <laughs> no in, in so many words all the time. You know, but um, you know that that's a, that's okay. You work around that, and 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 uh, you know our successes I think do speak for themselves in terms of how we've been able to. Um, really enrich people's lives through music, and that's because our own lives have been enriched by it. Oh, that's killer. Well, I want to wrap up with one question here. For, for anybody who doesn't know it, I mean, Ed began his uh, musical career in retail at one of the most iconic music stores in the world, Manny's in New York City. Mm. And here you are at More Music, More Guitars in Evansville, Indiana. What, what makes this place special? It's, uh, I think uh, it's, it's my colleagues, you know, I mean, we, we have a, a, a strong group of people that care, you know, um, and, and, and a very self-aware group of individuals, you know, they're, ref they're reflective and they recognize their own, you know, uh, journey as, 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 you know, musicians and, and artists and creatives. And that capacity for self-reflection is, is hugely important because, you know, that's the only way you grow and learn, you know, and you make mistakes. That's what makes us human beings. But having that capacity to recognize that and build upon it um, and, and, you know, learn and adapt, you know, that's something that, that all of my colleagues, they, they, they live that. And so I'm, I'm thrilled to, to, to also be a part of that. Oh, it Thank you so much. Well, I feel pleasure, fortunate to get to work with you. Feelings mutual. You have an opportunity to work with Ed as well. Anytime you're in the market for guitar, questions about gear, anything out, give Ed a call or any of his colleagues here. They are the experts in what they sell. So, more guitars. <laughs>